Hello, my name is Amelia and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at rotoscoping via Photoshop. What rotoscoping means is taking a video put and separating it into, in, into frames sorry, and then we can draw back on top or replace that footage with our drawing. So to begin with I have Photoshop 2020 open. I'm going to go up to file and I'm importing and I'm importing video frames to layers. So I'm going to select that and then I'll find the video that I want to use. There we go. And I'm going to press open. So first thing that opens up is this import panel. And there's my footage and I can watch it through if I press play. Um, underneath this panel I have a play ahead so I can watch or pull it along to find parts of the video that I find most interesting and furthermore I've got these split player heads where I can just pick a small segment of my footage if I didn't want to select the whole thing however this is a very short one so I'm going to select the entire footage then I need to limit it to every something frames so a little tip because I'm drawing the frames, I don't want to draw what is usually made in video, so 30 frames or 30, yeah, 30 frames per second. So I'm actually going to drop maybe three frames per second. And if I was drawing a time lapse or something, and if it was extremely slow motion, but I wanted it at normal speed, I would drop further further frames than three. So for example, if I was doing a slow motion, but I like a flower opening but I wanted it to happen quicker, I'd drop about eight frames. There is no perfect or easy um, way to know how many frames to drop, it's just a bit of trial and error. And I want to make sure that make frame animation is selected when I hit, before I hit OK. So with those elements in place or choices, I'm going to hit OK. So, because I animate often, my timeline is already at the bottom of the screen. If anyone opens up without a timeline in place, go to Window, scroll to the bottom and select your timeline. And it will open up like so. If I hit, hit Play, I can watch my video go along. So I can see here I've got 17 frames and each of those frames have their own layer. I can see I've got 17 layers. So I'm going to go to frame one, layer one. And the first thing I like to do when I'm rotoscoping is to make a new layer and I make it a plain white layer. And I actually make sure that it's underneath all the current existing layers. And I'm going to highlight the entire animation. So on frame one, I'm going to hold shift and select frame 17 and turn that white layer on and off. What that means is even on frame 11, you can see that that layer is on. This is going to make our life easier when we start to animate. So I'm going to pick up my brush. I'm going to go to layer one. And the first thing I'm going to do is drop the opacity so I can start tracing over it. So I can drop the opacity in the layer panel by doing so, or a shortcut is to hit V on your keyboard and 5 for 50 or V6 for 60 percent opacity. And then I'm going to make a new layer on top because this time I'm actually going to replace this footage rather than draw into it. I'm going to pick up my brush again and I'm essentially going to start drawing in this character. Now I'm going to ignore the little uh, dog lead that it's holding there. And I'm essentially just going to start filling in the information in my style. So as you can see rotoscoping is a really great way to get movement down without having to sit there and working it out frame by frame. Or furthermore, you could add 
hand-drawn elements to real-life footage. Get that tree trunk in. And it's up to you how much or how little detail you place back in. Put a few of these trees back in. Like so. If I'm happy with where frame one is at, I could essentially turn that footage off so that's deactivate layer one by selecting the eye icon, leaving behind my new drawn layer. And then I'm gonna progress onto layer or frame two. So clicking on frame two and then selecting layer two, V50 to drop that opacity down and a new layer on top. Pick up my brush and carry on drawing. And essentially, I'm just going to repeat that process until I have drawn all 17 frames. So I just take you through the rest of this frame before I do a bit of a Blue Peter moment. So, because I placed some of those trees randomly, and I may not necessarily remember which trees I placed, instead of sort of re-guessing or jumping between frame one and two, what I'm actually going to do is use that same activation system as I did on layer one, where I'm actually going to turn layer two off and pick up layer one and I can immediately see where my trees are to retrace back over them. I could if I didn't want these trees to change have done them on a separate layer where they didn't move at all. But now, between those layers, I'm going to get a boiled line between those trees. And what a boiled line is when a line moves and jitters. So it's up to you what effect or look you would like. And essentially, I'm just going to go through, so layer 3, frame 3, on the layer, V5, new layer, and repeat the post process of drawing back in. And I'm just going to keep going until I have the whole animation. So before you hear my laptop die, I'm just going to do that quickly. Okay, so when you've finished your animation, it should look something like, oh, like this. So if I just show you within my layers panel what we're looking at, I grouped all of my line work into one folder so that I could put a gradient map on it and change the black line into a deeper purple line. At this stage, to save file size, I could go in and start deleting this original footage. Um, I then, a colour was a bit of an afterthought for me, so after that I then put in layer by layer some colour in and I did that frame by frame separately again because I like that boiled line look you could set just one background colour like for example that pink is just the same pink layer throughout all of the frames because I didn't need that to move now this is still going very fast because we've still got the time signature of 0.03 which was real-time footage. So I'm going to select frame 1, hold shift on my keypad and select frame 17. 
use the drop down menu next to 0 0.03 and I'm going to try a different time delay. So 0.1 is moving a bit slower and a little bit better. I might even try a no delay, see how fast or slow that goes. That might be a bit much, it seems a little bit a bit too much. So I might go back to 0 0.01. What this means is it's reading each frame a little bit more similarly as um, 25 frames per second that you get in frame animation rather than 30 frames per second that you get in the real time footage that we pulled this from. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to export this as a mp4 and a gif file. If you want to see how to do that there is a separate video. Um, so jump ahead and get your animations exported.